Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Business Spotlight. I'm your host today, Todd Rodden. I'm a certified executive and business coach. I own Aspire Action Coach based in the Dayton, Ohio area. Uh, we're thrilled today to have Aaron Sisk uh, join us. Aaron is the CEO and creative director for Spark Space Creative, which is a, a branding and design studio also based here in the Dayton area. And she's going to share you a lot more about uh, their story and her story as the, the founder of the company. Uh, for those who are joining us today for the first time, we're excited to have you join the Business Spotlight series. I encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button uh, so you can uh, enjoy and receive uh, future messages from other business leaders uh, like you're going to experience here today uh, with Aaron. So, Aaron, we're thrilled to have you join us. Uh, take a minute, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and also about uh, SparkSpace. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me, Todd. I'm really excited to be here. Um, oh, we have a special guest. There's my dog, Nova. Um, Sparkspace Creative is a branding and graphic design studio that takes a holistic approach, making sure your brand works seamlessly across your website, your social media, any digital design or print collateral that you do. We love long-term partnerships and five of our First clients are still our clients, which I think is really cool. Uh, I've been in business for longer than I care to admit. Uh, I started as a, you know, a, like an intern at a graphic design studio long ago and worked my way up to um, running a creative department in a nonprofit. And then I took the leap to start Sparkspace. And that was in about 12 years ago that we started Spark Space, and it's been an amazing adventure. So what encouraged you to take that leap going from, you know, having these skills, working in the industry to now going out and going out on your own and creating your own firm? Yeah, so um, Spark Space was really born out of the need to make additional income. <laughs> you know, I think maybe a lot of entrepreneurs go through that, but um <laughs> You know, I was paying bills one night, kind of moaning about how tight things were. And this little voice ran through my head that said, you should freelance again. And so two weeks later, before I could really get anything in motion, a new client reached out. Um, I'd been working with her on a, a project at that nonprofit employer. And she liked my style. She liked how responsive I was. And so she reached out and asked if we did annual reports, which we do. And so from there, she asked me to help with an annual event. She introduced me to her boss, who introduced me to several new people, and we were off and running. Oh, great. A, a kind of a signal from the market that, hey, there, there was a need and that you were a great fit for that. And then, you know, take the ball and, and, and run with it. So that, that's great. Yes. So maybe share with us a little bit around a couple, you know, some of the, the prime services you have and who, who are your target customers? So if somebody is listening to this, they know, hey, we should call Aaron and, and team because they could be a great fit for, for some of our needs. Yeah. So Sparkspace loves working with decision makers in purpose-driven organizations, you know, companies that are actively helping to make the world a better place in any number of ways. Um that goodness really energizes us and the clients see that, you know, it comes through in the work that we do. And I don't know, it, it sounds cheesy, but we, we genuinely care about our clients and we support their missions and we just dedicate our resources to helping them grow, to expanding their reach so we can all do more good in the world. And uh, I don't know, I think that energy comes through in the work. So does that, if I uh, kind of extend that out, does that mean you know, mostly focused on supporting like nonprofits or are there other types of enterprises that, that, that oh, are yeah. focused? Um, I think if, you know, any organization that has a really strong mission and they're trying to help people, if it's a cleaning company or even, a you know, someone who builds drone components, like they are doing their best to help make the world a better place in their own unique way. And so to me, that all counts. Um, yes, we do work with nonprofits and um, that's actually where we got our start. Okay. So you already uh, mentioned this, you're like, hey, you feel like the team really cares. Uh, 
what other elements makes uh, your team unique? You know, what separates you from, you know, other, you know, branding and creative uh, firms that are out there? Well, our, we, we think marketing and branding is super fun. So we bring all this joy. That's actually the first, uh, our first value is choose joy. And our second is surprise and delight. We listen very carefully to our clients and then we pull out all the stops and go above and beyond their expectations. You know, if um, our clients are excited to work with us and I quote, it feels like Christmas morning when I open your design drafts. And <laughs> I think that is, it's a testament to the connection that we build, the relationships that we build. And, you know, we truly are partners and you know, we, we end up finishing each other's sentences, but you know, that comes through in the design too, because, you know, a lot of design is kind of mind reading, right? You have a need and a goal and you communicate that. And then it's up to us to interpret it. So having a strong relationship is a real key to success. Well, well building upon this, I'm, I'm always intrigued by, you know, what type of marketing it works for different types of businesses. But especially when I talk to anybody who specializes in areas like branding and creative uh, design kind of work. So what, what channels work the best for you for generating, you know, new customers and new uh, building new relationships? We have honestly, until the last couple of years, we were built on referrals um, all this time. It has just been word of mouth and, so the bigger we get, um, you know, we realize that we need to put our money where our mouth is and kind of do our own marketing. So uh, a lot of what we do is what we recommend to or probably what other entrepreneurs do. You know, you get out and you network and you meet people and start to build relationships. Um, I post, well, my social media manager is kind of yelling at me to post more on LinkedIn and become that you know, I'm the face of the organization, like just own it, Aaron. And, uh, you know, people want to hear what you have to say. So getting out more on LinkedIn, find some visibility that way. Uh, we build a target list that we'll be reaching out to, you know, you got to figure out who your ideal clients are and then uh, try and find their contact information, put together a compelling offer and reach out. We're also going to get into um, Facebook ads, some Google ads this year. You yeah. talked about networking. Uh, mm -hmm. Networking can mean a lot of different things to different people. So, you know, what what are the right marketing or networking avenues for, for you and your firm? Well, I am a, kind of a... a I don't know. It's funny. It's um, I avoided networking for a really long time and it was okay because of all the referrals, right? It was like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Aaron, I want you to meet so-and-so. So I go in there and, you know, it was easy to have a conversation with one person, but walking into the room, you know, and just smiling through the nervousness and getting out there is, uh, you know, that's always been difficult. I'm sure other people face that challenge too, but it's, it's such a necessity you know, it's, it's the, probably the best first touch, you know, after networking or uh, word of mouth. And so for us, it's, um, through the chamber, uh, there's a women in business networking program through better business bureau. Um, you know, and we're, we're always looking for more ways to get out there. You know, great, great examples, right? Of uh, uh, particular uh, networking associations you can really plug into there. So, so it's uh, you're going on 12 years being in business, being that uh, that CEO. I'm sure, you've had a few twists and turns in the road uh, during that time. So, what's what's been the biggest challenge or two that you've overcome? What did you learn from those? Yeah. So, the first challenge was recognizing when it was time to. Uh, take the leap from freelancing days or uh, evenings and weekends while I was working a full-time job to quitting the day job and really going out on my own. And uh, that was 
a memorable day in September a few years ago. I think that was 20, 2013 that I actually went out on my own. It was sooner than my husband and I thought. And I remember I had written a list of all of the, the business that we had coming. And I realized that I wasn't going to be able to fulfill all of these commitments and work my full-time job. So I called my husband, you know, I'm like, hey, guess what? It's time. <laughs> it's like, Aaron, you're about 18 months early. And I'm like, I know, but it's happening. And he said, let's do it, you know? And, and so that was it. You know, I put in my notice and uh, we moved on from there. Um, the second challenge was really getting the courage to hire my first team member. Um, for whatever reason, I was super intimidated of the, the hiring process and I don't have any HR experience. And I let that stand in the way for probably two or three years. And, you know, it wasn't like now. It wasn't, you know, you can't Google, hey, Google, what's it look like to hire a new employee? It was a lot of phone calls and kind of learning and talking to other people. And um, now, of course, you know, in hindsight, the second I hired her, it was like, darn it, why didn't I do that sooner? <laughs> but, yeah. So that uh, that's a great lead into to your team. So maybe take a minute, talk about yeah, kind of the, the size of your team, the types of roles. And uh, you hired that first employee a few years ago. Uh, what have been your keys to attracting uh, strong talent uh, since then? Yeah. So uh, we have five people on the Sparkspace team and we're all pretty specialized. Um, and we have a web designer, uh, art director, an illustration, or well, an illustrator who does, they all do amazing work. We also have a social media manager and a project manager who keeps all of it running super smoothly. Uh, that used to be my role. So I, I think I'm most appreciative of, <laughs> of her. Um, they have all been with me since all the designers since about 2019. And um, we actually grew during COVID. And so I hired them all in, uh, I think it was 21. And, uh, you know, then we hired the social media manager and uh, the project manager was last. But it's been a, a real interesting arc, I guess. Um, you know, they're getting a team to work without silos because they're in kind of their own little departments. You know, it's like so-and-so works on this and so-and-so works on that. So over the years, I've worked really hard to get them all working together and to being relying on each other. And they, they are now, you know, it was uh, in the beginning, I think my leadership style was a lot more, you know, driven and grindy. But over the years, it's just, it's evolved into this, you know, a much more cohesive, caring, you know, focus on mental health um, kind of thing. And we really rely on each other. Great lesson learned of having to adapt your own style as, as you build the, the, the team up there. So um, what, what are your keys then to retaining the team? Um, keys to retaining, uh, you know, I've learned that I know that money is obviously very important to people, but I have learned that it isn't everything. It's being excited about your workplace. You know, I had some bad bosses, which is another reason why I dreamed of having my own design studio. And I wanted to create something where the team was excited, you know, they're energized. They don't have the Sunday scaries, you know, they show up Monday, like ready to roll. And, um, it just, it's been amazing to watch them all gel so much. Okay. You talked about, you know, making sure they're not uh, getting kind of stuck in their own silos working together. So you've got kind of your, you know, kind of your spirit of being energized about it, but are there any other kind of processes or tools you put in place to ensure, you know, that there is that spirit of connection and collaboration? 
For sure. And I think the, I need to say that we're a virtual team. Um, we have a person in Chicago and we have a couple in Columbus and the rest of us are here in Dayton and weekly zoom meetings are kind of our jam. They've, uh, they've really helped us build that community. And, um, over the years, you know, once a month, we, not once a month, we just spend one meeting on swapping stories and talking about music and what people are listening to and watching and, you know, just like the, the soft stuff, the water cooler conversations that you would have if we were in person. And it's really been enlightening for all of us, you know, and, and the team really likes those. They like to share, they like the opportunity to kind of take off the work mantle and just put it down for a minute, you know? Well, it means a lot that you're willing to, to, to make the time, uh, you know, with them. Hey, you know, we're just, hey, this is, we're just going to hang out and get to know each other and, you know, talk about fun stuff, right? Not, not necessarily that next, you know, project deadline that's around the corner kind of thing. Right. right. So, yes. So the, uh, so we talked about some of the challenges you've overcome. So as you look out on the horizon, what's the, the one challenge or problem uh, that you'd love to fix. If I could give you a magic powder that you could sprinkle on that 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 issue and it would go away, what what would that be? Uh, I would improve our visibility. You know, like throw off that invisibility cloak. And uh, our team is next level, but even with our our efforts, I feel like we are Dayton's best kept secret. And uh, yeah. So I would encourage our viewers to give us a shout and see what's different about Spark Space. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're at that, what, what are the best ways for people to connect and follow uh, you and, and, the, and the team? Sure. So you can check out Spark Space Creative, S-P-A-R-K-S-P-A-C-E, creative.com. Uh see our portfolio, read our case studies, click on that schedule a call today button in the top right corner. Uh, you can also send an email to start.something at sparkspacecreative.com or find me, Erin Sisk, S as in Sam, I-S-K-E on LinkedIn. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Instagram at Sparkspace Creative. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned growing more on Facebook and any other social channels. So it's good to get those in there. Yes. So roughly 12 years in, good track, sounds like really good traction, got a really strong team. What's your vision for the future? You look three, five years down the road. What, what's your dream? <laughs> 35 years down the road. No, three to five, not 35. <laughs> <laughs> Going by then. Um, three to five, you know, we love these we love these annual partnerships and I think we're, we're trying to grow that area of the business. You know, we, we love a great one-off project, but our goal is always to turn those clients into repeat customers. Cause that's just, that's our, that's just how we roll. It's, it's my nature to build relationships and partnerships. And, you know, I think people struggle finding a reliable resource and having these kind of relationships, you know, we're your go-to and we're going to move heaven and earth to get your stuff to you. I have tons of stories about, you know, the lengths we go to make sure that people have what they need when they need it. And it's, uh, I think it's one of the things that makes us special. But um, so anyway, long-term partnerships are absolutely one of the things that we're focusing on in the next three to five years. Um I'm kind of kicking around the idea of like a design summer camp. Uh, that might be interesting, you know, get some teens, help them career explore in a, you know, a safe, creative environment that, you know, that's been something I've always wanted to do too. Do you have visions of someday right now you're virtual? Do you see eventually having being large enough that you would have a location? Do you think the virtual model is great and you know that, that you're going to continue to grow that way? We are going to continue virtually. We've had several conversations about the return to work, return to office situation, <laughs> you know, and my team is, uh, 
they are devout workers from home. And, you know, I'm okay with that. Everything's getting done. We meet quarterly when we can and get together in person to, you know, take a training or do a photo shoot or whatever. And, you know, I think, I think that model just, it really works for us. So a lot of uh, entrepreneurs watching this, folks who uh, tend to be a little bit earlier in their journey as a business owner. So taking all stock of what you've learned up to now, what advice do you give somebody? Maybe they're a couple of years into their, their journey as a business owner. What would you, you know, advice would you share? Your keys to success? Yeah, so... Um... So my key to success is, and this might be a little metaphysical for people, but I found that good things happen when I'm consistently in a good place. When I'm in this, you know, high vibe mindset and everywhere I look, I see opportunities. I know I'm on the right path and it wasn't always that way. And so I guess the advice I would give is to, you know, it, it's simple and you've probably heard it before, but I just, I trust my gut or your heart or whatever it is that speaks to you, you know, that little voice inside. Um, when I think I'm smarter than my intuition, that's when I get in trouble. So just tune in and listen to your gut. It will not steer you wrong. <clears throat> uh, that's intriguing. The, the part you mentioned about, hey, when I'm in a good place, good things tend to happen. Yeah. Life of a business owner, though, ups and downs, yeah. it's easy to, to find some valleys and, and stay there for a while. So how do you, how do you, what practices do you have to keep yourself in that good place? Yeah. So I'm a, a meditation person and I do yoga in the mornings. It's, these are things I've found that help keep the stress down. You know, I, I work out every morning. There are various kinds of things I do, but getting that like excess energy out in the morning helps me stay clear and calm. And um, it's the, they're the things I come back to, you know, if I lapse and I don't do those for a few days, I see a difference and I can feel myself, you know, the doubt creeps in or my confidence is slipping or something. And it's like, Oh my God, what did I do? And so I just, I come back to my morning routine, which is absolute gold for me. And it really, it sets the tone for my day. Um, you know, sometimes business owners just need a, a kick in the pants. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, like last summer, we were kind of going through some stuff and I hired a um, chief marketing officer to like help bring some clarity. We're launch There's a, a separate business that we're kind of launching and she could see that I was not in a good place. And so <laughs> she zeroed in on me and um, whew, she was a straight talker and really shook me out of whatever the funk was that I was in and uh, helped me get back to my morning routine and, you know, back to here, back to where I'm happy and successful and positive. Well, thanks for being so open and sharing that. And again, yes, you know, so so impactful, so powerful, and so important, right? Because uh, again, the, the journey is going to have some of those the, those down periods, so those those challenges, and so having the practices, having the the tools to to get your mindset in the right place, just just so so essential. Uh, it really is. So as we get closer to to wrapping up here, who? Who do you follow? Any books, podcasts? Who do you look after for insights? Yeah. So the book I love the most that um, when I am struggling, I turn to this. It's called You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Oh. And uh, wow, she'll snap you back into a positive mindset. <laughs> nobody's business. Are you familiar with her? Yeah, I've, I've read that book. It's been a few years. I read that book. So sounds like you're the, the CMO you hired had a little bit of that tone uh, to get you back. In yeah, that tough look. <laughs> yeah, she was great. Um, I like, uh, I'm listening to a, a podcast right now called We Can Do Hard Things. And it's uh, uh, Liz Gilbert. 
you know, she's written several books about creativity and kind of, well, Eat, Pray, Love was her thing. And she is, uh, she's a, a force of wellness and, you know, positive mindset. So that's what I gravitate to are those things that keep me in that, the, the positive state, you know, keeping the good things flowing. So as we look to wrap up here today, uh, Aaron, what inspires you when you wake up in the morning and you look forward to? The sunshine through my window and doing my morning routine, getting in flow. Well, I thank you for sharing your story and a little bit more about your team and Spark Space Creative. Uh, again, encourage folks, uh, go check them out. Uh, she shared the, the website link uh, before, but uh, sparkspacecreative.com. Uh, also connect uh, with Aaron on uh, LinkedIn and, uh, you know, coming uh, information through their Facebook and Instagram channels as well. So uh, love your openness and sharing your story here. Uh, again, uh, for those uh, viewing us today, encourage you to go out and hit that subscribe button. Uh, hope you took good notes. Uh, from uh, the lessons that Aaron shared here as well. And we wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you.